one. So over the past year, I've been going to a karaoke bar in the city. I mostly go alone and sit by myself, but I know one of the co-owners, the manager, and a few of the staff. I go almost every week, whether it was a Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. While I do have issues with people still due to my anxiety, as my first EP encounter, I developed an intolerance towards stupid and stuck-up people, so I had tendencies to lash out now when confronted by such a person. Sometimes I'll end up having an attack afterwards, or I end up having a very strong drink when I have access to alcohol. Cast, Karen, stuck-up bitch. Tal, 14-year-old brat. Jack, awesome manager. Mike, very nice co-owner. Me, mystical elf from another world. Now on with the story. So I'm at a karaoke bar in the city. I've been there since they opened at 8.30pm. I was alone there like I often was, and I was fine as I knew a few people who worked there and one of the co-owners, so my anxiety never really flared up while I was in the crowded bar. It was just coming to 9.30pm when I got a call from my sister, so I went out front. After being on the phone for a few minutes, my sister and I ended the call, and as I hung up, a woman, 30 to 40 years, and her son, clearly not old enough to be in a bar, came around the corner and headed to the door of the bar, where a man was standing and checking IDs. That man was Jack, the manager. Now, the legal drinking age in Australia is 18. With karaoke bars and clubs, no one under 18 is allowed, even if they are with a parent. It's different if it's a restaurant with a bar like Scissors. I leaned against the wall and watched the two for a moment before deciding to head in, as it was a cold night, but rather warm inside the bar. The woman and her son go to the door, and the interactions are as followed. Karen walks up to the door. May I please see your ID? Karen says nothing and shows Jack her ID. He smiles and hands her back her ID. Thank you, ma'am. Karen smiles curtly and walks inside. Tell goes to follow his mother. Jack stops him and asks for his ID. I don't have one, I'm 14. Well then, I'm afraid I can't let you in. I'm with my mother, so it's fine. Now, I could already tell from what the boy said that shit was going to hit the fan, and quickly, so I decided to head to the door to go inside and away from the drama. As I got to the door, Karen appeared again. Tal, what's taking you so long? Hey, points at Jack, won't let me in. Why won't you let my son in? It's a karaoke bar. It's a licensed premises that serves alcohol. And it's not a restaurant, I cannot allow anyone under the age of 18 in without an ID to enter. He's with me, so it's fine. No, it isn't. He's underage. He can't come into the bar. Tell starts whining like a child. Mummy, I want to sing. You will, honey. By this time I was getting really cold, so I made my way through the door, nodding at Jack as I passed him, only to be grabbed by my arm and spun around by Karen. Why is she allowed in and not my son? She is clearly not 18 or older. I'm 21 with short hair that makes me look older, but sometimes the way I dress makes me look younger, and in this case, I was wearing a dress that flows a lot when you spin. Ma'am, I'm 21, and can you please let go of my arm? Ma'am, she is here every week, and she always has her ID on her in case Slicker and Gaming show up and card everyone. Bullshit. She doesn't even have a bag with her. I start to panic a bit. It's inside. Mom, it's cold out here. I want to go inside and sing. Look what you've done. My poor baby is freezing because you won't let him in. I'm married to the owner of this bar. Let my son in. Jack and I look at each other, which seemed to piss Karen off even more. Quit staring at each other and let my son in. How about I message your husband to come outside? My husband is at home, he doesn't come here until tomorrow. That's funny, because both the owners are here tonight. My anxiety had subsided for a moment. I know for a fact you're not married to either of them, since one is single and I met the other one's wife two weeks ago. I am married to the owner! Jack messages one of the owners to come outside. Jack? Me? What's going on? This lady wants me to allow her son into the bar, despite him being only fourteen. She then proceeded to stop me from entering the bar, despite being told she's been here for an hour and is 21. That's a lie. I'm married to the owner. I will get you fired. Ma'am, I'm the co-owner of this bar, and I'm not married to you, and neither is the other co-owner. Bullshit. I am calling the police about you. This is discrimination. 
I had enough with Karen and her son, so I ignored my rising anxiety and got right in Karen's face. Listen here, you entitled bitch. You do not own this bar. I have been coming here every week for the past year, and not once have I seen you. I also told you how I met his, I pointed Mike, wife two weeks ago. I know both owners, and you're not married to either one of them. If you want to call the cops, go ahead. All three of us will say how you've been harassing us and trying to get an underage kid into a bar. It is illegal for anyone to enter a licensed premises if it's not a restaurant. Plus, there is also security cameras with audio. So it would be your best intention to turn around and leave. This shit might work in other places where the owners aren't always around and their spouses don't show up. But it won't work here. Jack and Mike were surprised as they knew I had anxiety and hated confrontation. But I was cold and wanted to go inside and this bitch was preventing me from doing so. Karen was about to say something when her son tugged on her arm and she looked at him. Her 14-year-old son had pissed his pants from the tone of voice I was using. Karen looked back at me and then grabbed her son's arm and ran off, dragging him behind her. After that, I went inside and ordered a very strong drink as my anxiety had shot through the roof and I was near a panic attack. 2. Background this is a story about my 18th birthday celebrations. This takes place in India. To make my birthday special, we decided to dine at Barbecue Nation. A really great place. So this is how the place works. There are barbecue grills in the middle of each table and a little flag. When you raise the flag, the staff starts bringing you barbecue on those sticks. Don't know what they're called. And you can have a buffet-style main course. So, since the place is usually full, you have to book online in advance and give vegetarian, non-vegetarian preferences for the barbecue. You could also book the place for special occasions. So in the ancient Vedic systems, there were occupational groups, like the occupations required for an economy to function. These were non-hereditary, and with these systems, every ancient Indian settlement was an economy of its own. But after centuries of social degradation, they turned into the so-called hereditary occupational caste system. So as for me, my ancestors were vegetarian, teetotal priest teachers, and I am a non-vegetarian atheist. Sorry, ancestors. So back to the story. I, my dad, mom, my uncle, and his fiance were sitting at a table. I, my uncle, his fiance, are hardcore non-vegetarians. My dad eats non-vegetarian but prefers vegetarian. My mom is pure vegetarian. I and my to-be aunt are atheists while mom, dad, and uncle are Hindus. None of them are zealots, and are very modern and never force their religion down others' throats. We have checked our reservation and settled down, and our conversation is multilingual, switching between English and Marathi as per convenience. The waiter brings our initial barbecue. Time to meet the cast. Me, mortal entitled Menta. Dad, dad, mom, mom, you, uncle, F. Uncle fiance, EM, the NH nice husband, NK nice kid, W waiter, M manager. The EP and NK and NH were on a table beside us, and were fussing over one thing or another since we came. So as I took the first barbecue, chicken I assume, she came over to us and tapped my dad on the shoulder. Excuse me. That says yes. But may I ask? Points toward the mutton barbecue. Uh, barbecue. Can you please not eat non-vegetarian food sitting beside us? Now I'm trying to ignore the lady and get some food inside me. I'm starving. When she lunges ahead and knocks it out of my hand. WTF! You ungrateful child. I just stopped you from sinning. You should thank me. I try to say something, but she ignores me. And speaks to my dad. You shouldn't pass your sinning habits to your child, you... It's an untranslatable word, but it's not a good one. He should be raised in a godly way. There we go. My dad responds. Shut up, bitch. Why don't you leave my family alone and fuck off? I pay to be here and I will eat whatever I want. As a woman, you wouldn't tolerate your husband singing. You should divorce him and raise him yourself. Lady, don't tell me how to raise my kids. This is a free country and I'll eat whatever I want. My mom, the darling she is, almost never swears. 
Now we have started eating in earnest and very soon the first servings had disappeared, despite her objections. As the waiter came with second servings, she knocked them out of his hand. What an outrageous waste of good barbecue. Now I'm furious. One thing you should know about me is that I don't follow any religion. But I'm interested in the mythology and history of all of them. And have read not just the Hindu scriptures, but also the Bible and the Torah for pleasure reading. If you're so into religion, why are you spilling food, you bitch? Doesn't your religion say that food is as precious as the god who created the world? She had no answer for this. Now NH steps in and takes her back amid renewed shouting. He promises to pay us back before leaving. And we trust this guy. So we get yet another serving of barbecue, after which comes the funny part. My dad orders drinks for the adults. I was not allowed yet, drinking age is 21, though voting is 18, including uncle's fiance. The drinks arrive and then EM looks wide-eyed as F drinks her alcohol. Before either NH or NK could restrain her, she comes over to our table and sweeps the glass from F's hand. The glass falls and shatters. We were lucky that F didn't get hurt. EM started screaming about how F was a minor and shouldn't be allowed to drink, and tries to slap her when my uncle, who's a big man, catches her hand and pushes her back forcefully. They begin a screaming match. Now F does have a baby face and is shorter than I am, but she certainly doesn't look like a minor, and she's just a year younger than you. Finally, EM says the magic words, I want to see the manager. You says, no, I want to see the manager. The manager comes and she begins to rant about how my family was corrupting me, how my father was sexually abusing me and my sister, she thought F was my sister, WTF, and how F was a minor, an alcoholic hoe who shouldn't be allowed to drink, and how we had thrown an alcohol glass at her. Now F is on the verge of tears, she's quite faint-hearted. F shows M her ID with shaking hands, and the security footage proved that EM was talking BS. So instead of paying only us for our barbecue serving, she'd have to pay the hotel for the glass she shattered. When she realized this, she bolted for the door, leaving NK and NH behind. NH paid for all the expenses while NK apologized. M called mall security and EM was caught. We did press charges and the EM is locked up in a mental institution somewhere. Well, I got a free birthday cake and coupons from the hotel for all my troubles. So, yay. I'll just clear up some confusions. First, the police do come when called in Mumbai for destruction of private property and female harassment. Secondly, about the EP's insanity, it was the restaurant owner who pressed charges for destruction of property and we just went along with harassment. The EP tried to plead insane in order to delay the verdict. As you might know, such people have to undergo psychological evaluation to determine if they're insane or not. So this EP got more than what she bargained for and was actually diagnosed with some kind of antisocial disorder. And that is why she was put in a mental institution. Because of her own stupidity to plead insanity, not because of us. 3. Last weekend, my friends and I decided to go camping for a break. There were seven of us planning to go when three of them had kids and were keen for a break. A few hours before we were set to head off on Friday, one of my friends says she is unable to find someone to look after her nine-year-old son and says she's bringing him. We weren't particularly keen on that, but we felt bad saying she can't come, so we just let her bring him. To avoid everyone bringing a car, we take two and agree that whoever is in each car will split petrol costs. She brings her own car with just her and her son. This becomes relevant later. We had never met her son, but we learned very quickly he is spoiled and quite frankly a nightmare to be around, because she lets him do whatever he wants. From here on, I'll refer to her as EP and him as SK, and give a few examples of the crap she pulled. He eats almost exclusively cereal, chips, and chicken nuggets. He has a tantrum if he even offer anything outside of that, so we learned quickly not to try and get a real meal in him. We spent a day at the lake. She had his chips and nuggets ready, but he decides he wants cereal for lunch. She wanted us all to leave because we obviously didn't bring milk to the lake. EM demands one of us go get milk for her boy, and when we say no, SK starts screaming, and then she yells over him, Look what you've done to my baby boy! When she sees we are still not getting milk for her, she runs to her car and drives off, 
leaving us with SK, who is still screaming. She has gone for over an hour and comes back with milk and says, Sorry, I needed a break from your negative attitudes. He picks up on those vibes and that's why he's been screaming. She then demands we split the cost of her petrol for going out to get milk, saying, If you lot hadn't been so stubborn and cruel to me and SK, then I wouldn't have had to drive all that way. We all just said no and got into our cars. I have mental health issues, which I take medication for, morning and night. SK wanted to play with them because they are different colors and shapes, and I had brought them in my weekly pack so they were all separated, and I guess he thought they were candy or toys, I don't know. I explained to him that they were dangerous, not candy, and that it was important medicine. Because I didn't trust him not to try to grab them, I moved them from my bag to the car. That night I go to grab my meds and can't find them. I ask around and everyone says EP had been in the car last, so I go to ask her if she moved or seen them. Her and her son are on the mat and I am horrified to see him playing with my pills. I rush over and take them all, asking her what the hell he is doing. To which she just says, he wanted to play with them. He knows not to eat them. I take them all and tell her there is something wrong with her if she thinks letting her kid play with medication is no big deal. When he starts screaming that he wants them back, she tries to pull them off me and starts yelling that I am evil and trying to abuse her son. I'm bigger than her, so I push her off me, and they're both on the mat screaming, well, I thank God that was our last night there, so I didn't have to suffer much longer. We had agreed to stay at a campsite in our tents. We had two tents, big enough for all of us, and figured it was cheap as fuck to just share tents and cook food over a little gas stove. EP decided to get a little unit because they come with a small oven, and SK only likes frozen nuggets, oven-baked, not pan-fried. We told her that was a lot of money just to bake his nuggets, and she said it's fine. Then, at the end of our weekend, she tried adding her unit to the costs we were splitting. We were baffled. None of us has spent any time in the unit or used the facilities in it so we didn't understand why she would think that it should be split. We refused and she lost it at reception, saying we should have known that she needed units for me and my baby. We refused to pay and walked out while she cried at reception until they told her to pay or they'd call the police. And on top of it all, she emailed us an invoice with the money we owed her. Because we had split the costs of food, petrol and accommodation, she had decided that her cost too should be split, and split the cost of her son's food, the unit she stayed in, the petrol she used, and a fee that she claimed would show we were remorseful for the way you treated my boy this weekend. He is a miracle and should be treated as such. I emailed her back and told her I wouldn't be paying a cent and that as far as I'm concerned our friendship was over. The others said something similar. She posted a status saying she was glad she cut ties with a group of child haters. I used to be confused as to how she was single as she is quite beautiful. And I thought, lovely. I thought her baby daddy was insane for leaving her. Now I know he was saving himself. 4. I am a lifeguard this summer. Good summer job. Get paid well. I love the job. I had told DK that he couldn't run on the pool deck. 99% of people that hear me tell them to walk, don't run again. This kid decided he was gonna stop at my whistle and hear me say, please walk. Then proceeded to break back into a full sprint, mind you, he's about 12. I blew my whistle and told him to walk, as is my protocol. If he runs again, he has to sit out for 15 minutes. This is company policy. It's laid out in our handbook very clearly. Here's where the fun begins. He decides to start running again. Okay, EK, come over here and sit down right here. No! I'm not asking, I'm telling you to do this. Only EM can tell me what to do. Okay, where is EM? Tell her to come here and speak with me, okay? EM overheard this, she storms over to me. I saw her hair cut, and I immediately thought of what I was going to tell the police later. What seems to be the problem with my little angel? As EK sprints to the stand. Listen, I've told him three times now to walk on the deck in under a minute. He's refused each time. I cannot have that here. So I'm going to have him sit out for 15 minutes. If you have a better idea, I'd love to hear it. Why can't he run? He's a kid. Kids need to run to get his energy out. Yes, you are correct. Kids have lots of energy. But him running is not safe for him, for you, or for anyone else at the pool. We're very crowded today, and I'm trying to keep everyone as safe as possible. And I'd hate to have anything happen to him on my watch. 
So you think you can sit here on your little stand, tell my kid what to do for no reason, and then sit there and not even bother to make eye contact with me? Here I was a bit mad. But the American Red Cross teaches us to never take our eyes off the pool for any reason other than an emergency outside the pool. Even when you're talking to someone. I explained this to her. How it's a big liability and it can get people hurt. I want to hear from your supervisor. There's no way you can tell my child what he can and cannot do. Okay, E.K., go along. E.K., stay out of the water. You're still sitting out and you need to wait. E.M., I'd like you to read the pool rules. They clearly state that the lifeguard has the right to deny the use of the pool at any time to anyone at their discretion. So I'd like E.K. to sit out for another 12 minutes, and after that he can go back in the water. No, E.K. is going to do exactly what he wants. Ma'am, if you're not going to let me do my job, I'm going to have to ask you to leave the pool area. You have to listen to the lifeguards. I know it may not seem fair, but I tell lots of kids not to run. All that needs to happen- Where is your supervisor? I need to see him immediately. He works in his office, ma'am. It could be a while. And I have to wait till adult swim, since I can't leave the stand to call him till then. Mind you, kid swim had just started. It'd be 30 minutes before I call him anyways, and I'd call the cops sooner. That's fine. In the meantime, E.K. and I will enjoy our pool. No, you won't. Y'all cannot enter the pool for at least another 10 minutes. E.M. starts shaking the stand, trying to get me to fall out of the stand. And I decide I jump into the pool in order to avoid the concrete deck making contact with my whole body. If you don't leave this pool immediately, I'm gonna call the cops, E.M. No, you won't. What would they arrest me for? Trespassing? Assault, probably? I'd like to see you try. Long story short, I got out of the pool, cleared the pool so I could call the cops, and of course the only people that didn't leave the pool are E.M. and E.K. Cops came, arrested her for trespassing. I gave a statement and so did a few other people around. But it gets better. This particular pool is owned by the Homeowners Association. Basically, people that live in the neighborhood pay to have perks like pools and cookouts and such. And the president of the Homeowners Association was there and, after seeing the incident, removed E.M. from the Homeowners Association. I also got a raise, and this is the only incident report I have filed this summer. I have no clue what happened to her legal-wise, but I know my pool management company is pressing charges, and I'll probably see E.M. soon enough in court. This only happened a few days ago, so I can't give too many updates concerning the legal side of this story. Prosecutors are still working out what to do. I am back working the same pool today, and I haven't had any trouble whatsoever. I had to console a young child because he thought that he would go to jail after he ran on the pool deck. Luckily, he's better now. 5. This happened, I think, a week ago. I don't keep track of days. EM, entitled Mom, EK, entitled Kid, Me, no clue, F, Friend, S, Security. Now onto the story. Me and F went to the game booths. People set up to win some prizes, but required you to give a certain amount of tickets to play. I gave, I think, five tickets to play one game. There was a knock over four bottles, two on two, but in order to win, you have to knock over all four to get a big prize, but if you miss by one, you can still get a small prize. I knocked over all four, and me and my friend were in complete shock because I knew I wouldn't win after hearing the rules. I chose the giant Pikachu plush as a prize. We went on a few rides, and the employee would always ask to hold the plushies, but not get confused who it belongs to. I wrapped my favorite jacket around it. After a ride, I went to pick it up. Enter EM. You have my child stuffed animal, can you give it back? No, I won this. If you like, I can show you where you can win this yourself. EM looked at me as if I insulted her and rolled her eyes. No, my EK can't waste his tickets in some stupid game. Just play again and win another if it's so easy. F, irritated, pushes herself in front of me and talks to the EM. Listen to him. It's not that hard, just win it. Do it yourself. It's just five tickets, not a thousand dollars. Oh, shut up. How much it costs is irrelevant. I don't care, and I want that plush now. At this point, a few people were noticing this happening, so I tap F on the shoulder, and we leave. EM and EK start following us for a while until we lost them in a big crowd, and F chooses to hold the plush for me. Later, when we make our way to the meeting spot, 
I feel a hand grab my shoulder, and surprise, it's EM with her EK behind her. You better give me the plush right now. I'm an adult and you need to listen to whatever I say, you hear me? It's either you give it to me peacefully or you can pick up the pieces and keep it, you brat. I had enough of your BS, you better leave me alone, because if you don't, you won't like what happens next. EK finally steps in, but to defend EM. A little info, he looks about 9 or 10, but sounds almost 13 or 14. If you do anything, you better expect to be paid back tenfold, bucko! EK pushes me away, and I catch up to F. After we all meet up and attend the pie-eating contest, got second, but it was still fun, and ate some lunch, we chatted a bit, and me and F walked off, still holding onto the Pikachu, just in case, because no one wanted to stay behind. We went through the House of Halls, and for a moment I looked back and see EM following us, and once we step in, EM dashes for the Pikachu, only grabbing its tail. The tail is designed by being held up and attached to the back by three strings in the top part, middle and bottom. When EM grabbed the tail, not only did she tear off the three strings, but the whole tail was torn off. EM knew she failed getting it, and threw it on the ground and walked towards us, her face was red from anger. Give the rest of me now! Right now! F was now mad. She gave me the Pikachu and walked towards the EM, and I went to get the tail, but this is what F said to EM. No, now you can shut the fuck up. Turn around and leave before I kick your dumbass myself. I can easily kick your ass, so get your boyfriend to give it to me or I'll have to knock both of you out. F and EM were now face to face. After I grabbed the tail, I grabbed F and we left back to the entrance, but EK was in the way with a smug look on his face, thinking that's it, and he won. But F pushed him out of the way, and me and F stayed at the meeting spot until the others came back. A few minutes passed by, and I give F the Pikachu and an ice cream to calm her down. With no time at all, EM, EK, and S came by, and EM had tears in her eyes. That's them, they threatened me, and EK stole from and pushed my son. They should be kicked out of here for good. So uh, let me talk to them in private, and we'll discuss the punishment after that. S comes to us and questions us about what happened, and me and F explain everything, no sugarcoating anything. He then questioned us about the Pikachu, and here's the conversation. I was lucky enough to win this in one go. Still can't believe it even now. I can even lead you to the booth if you want to. Kid, I want the truth. Did you win this or did you steal it? These booths are rigged to fail. I was with him the whole time. He won it fair and square. You know what? Show me the booth and we'll let them decide. It'll get bad if y'all lie to me. I'm staying here with a Pikachu. I don't need to go and I'll watch it while I'm here. I nod and take S to the booth, and EM and EK follow. Once we get there, the employee said, Hey, welcome back, Mr. Lucky Shot. Care to go another round to test your luck? Nope, just here to prove a point, looking at the EM and S. Alright, that settles it. No way, that employee is just saying that. We won that plush and we want it back now. Sorry, there's nothing I can do for you. Enjoy the fair, kid, and EM, play nice with others. Just like that, S left. EM and EK stormed off, and I went back to F. We didn't see EM or EK again, except on kitty rides and when they left the fairgrounds. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to The Impractical Proudness of Parents, number 10. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Well, I have to freely admit, when I was recording the lifeguard story, I had the Baywatch theme tune stuck in my head. As it often is. I'm always ready. I won't let you out of my side. I better stop there, because I could go on. I blame Obscurus Lip. I was watching her Baywatching reviews, and uh, I just got it stuck in my head. I had to go buy the MP3. Uh, that's uh, Movie Nights here on YouTube if you want to check her out. Uh, good stuff. Well worth a look. Okay, and as always, I'm recording the weekend videos in reverse order. So I'm going to head off for now because next I have to make what I'm hoping will be a double length spinning plates. Because 52, uh, it, it marks a full year of actually doing them. Hard to believe it was July last year, but then that's when I started them. And I'd like to do a little something to celebrate. Because I'm very glad they did as well as they did. Okay, with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, 
Thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.